Hey everybody, you are about to watch The Dr. Jamie Show. I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey everyone, welcome to The Dr. Jamie Show. The Dr. Jamie Show is all about increasing success, likability, and happiness. Uh, I love happy people. We need more of them in the world. I hope that you are happy on this happy Friday. It is nice outside in Tampa, but it is still a little too cold for me. Um, I am not digging this cold weather. I love you Northerners. You're great, but you're sending your cold vibes this way. Uh, so shortly, hopefully, we will send our heat vibes up to you. We have a great show today. We have returning guest Akash Patel. He is a candidate for Hillsborough County Commissioner District 1. I'm still trying to come up with an acronym that is shorter, but um, he is going to talk to us today all about uh, his uh, plans here for Tampa. We're going to talk transportation and taxes. We're going to talk about jobs, building, bringing people here, bringing events here to Tampa. But if you're not from Tampa, never fear. I have a whole section of this episode geared toward you as well. When you run for a campaign, there has got to be fears you've overcome, leaps you've taken, competition you have. We are going to ask Akash about those questions, get super serious with him, and find out how he overcomes his fears and take leaps. Uh, how do you work through competition? How could you see it as a good thing? Um, and we are going to use some of his tips, and hopefully some of us will incorporate them into our lives and take leaps that we're looking at taking, but we're also staring fear in the face and might not want to take that leap. So uh, Akash today, uh, just hold tight, and we are going to bring him out. So. Next week, uh, 3.30, we are having a segment all on bullying. If you go to my YouTube page, just type in Jamie Kulaga, K-U-L-A-G-A, for subscribe. And then go ahead uh, and look for some of the segments I've done on bullying. Um, I talk about what to do if your child um, is being bullied and prevention tips. But at the same time, I talk about what to do if you're the parent of someone that is bullying. Um, so it's not easy if you're the parent especially if you've done everything you can to raise a great child and your child is bullying. So we're going to talk about that. And on the show, we have Taylor Taylor. Yes, I, I, love, the, I, I, I love the name. In fact, when I sent uh, some information over, I'm like, Taylor Taylor? Yes, Taylor Taylor. I love it. Um, and then Christina Sanchez and then Capriana Sanchez. I love that first name too. Like this whole family just has fabulous names. Um, they are three siblings um, that their mother went through domestic violence. They rallied together to raise awareness to combat uh, bullying and domestic violence. They go to schools all over the country and talk about bullying uh, from middle school to college and prevention tips, what to do if you see someone being bullied. Uh, and we're going to have them on the show chatting about this. They're a young group, uh, I want to say, of kids. Um, and but they have such a powerful message so we'll chat about that next week on the six we have natalia levy on the show she is the author of the book cravings boss and we are going to talk about cravings uh do you ever crave stuff i do crave candy i love candy i love candy um What's your favorite candy? I'd love to know. Maybe type it in the chat. Um, unless you're too, unless you're hiding it. I like, you know, I actually, I like what? Skittles, Pop Rocks. Though back in the day, candies were really good. Does anyone remember those wax candies with like the juice in them? And you'd like bite the top off and squeeze the juice. Those were good. Pixie Sticks. It was like take a Pixie Stick, go to the dentist. Um, but those were really good too. Where you pop them open and yeah. Um, so yeah, we need her on the show. <laughs> Clearly, um, on the 13th, we have a dentist on the show. It's actually her first dentist, Charlotte Sterk. Um, she's actually got some cool products she's going to show us, too. There's like a mouthwash that you rinse with or a toothpaste that you put on your teeth, and it turns certain parts of your teeth a certain color if there's plaque there that you missed so that you can brush it and get them off. So I oh, think it's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, she's got some really high-tech tools she's going to share with us. On the 27th, we have Alan Wilkett on the show. He was actually supposed to be on the show um, about a month or two ago talking about human trafficking, but he was called the D.C., um, for something huge and major. He's going to talk to us about what that was. Uh, he is a Pasco County Sheriff, so we are going to learn a lot, not just about human trafficking, but about 
everything in the law enforcement area. And trust me, I'm going to ask him some stuff on this school shooting stuff. So send in your questions to ask him. Uh, and then that runs us into May. I'm not going to share everyone that we have going on in May, but we are going to start out with a dermatologist as our first segment in May, then June and July. Peace out, my friends. I'm going on summer break. Um, and you will see audios. Uh, you will hear audios. I will do short shows and have them up on YouTube, and then they will funnel into iTunes and Google Play. But that is right, work-life balance, baby. I am looking forward to it. Um, I will definitely miss you. And then we will return in August. Happy spring. How awesome. Happy spring. I love spring because it is one season closer to my favorite day of the year, the day that summer starts. I love summer. Um, and I'd love to know some of the things that you love about summer, too. I love pontoon boating. That is fabulous. Um, okay, so a little bit of updates here. Jordan Harbinger. That's right. He is going to be on the Dr. Jamie Show audio. Um, he is... I just look up to this guy. I love this guy. He was uh, the host of The Art of Charm. Branched out, has his own show, The Jordan Harbinger Show. You've got to look at it. But... I just paused and just can't believe it. This guy has 4 million downloads of his podcast every single month. And he is coming on the Dr. Jamie show. We are so excited to have him. We are actually going to talk about uh, top tips to grow your network. Akash has a lot of experience with that as well. Um, so we are going to talk about that with Jordan on the audio <laughs> show. That will be up. We are recording on the 20th, and it will be up on my YouTube channel, iTunes, and Google Play on April 20th. So look out for that. Um, Weight Watchers picked up an article that I wrote. Uh, so you can go to my website, click on the press page, click on Weight Watchers, and it will direct you to that article. We talk about how to be more present. So we hear it all the time. We know we're supposed to do it. But how do you exactly do it? Especially when our mind wanders all the time. So I give you some tips. Um, I am going to be on a huge panel on gun violence with some super amazing, very strong people in the state of Florida. Um, and that is next Wednesday. I am taking a mental health perspective of it. What does the what does gun violence in school, mass shootings do to our children, to our teachers, to our communities? Um, if you have any tips or anything that you want to share with me, hey Jamie, make sure you speak on this or I went through it and this is how I was impacted. You can message them in the chat right now or you can personally message me if it's private. I will bring up these issues, uh, so please send them to me. Um, it is what, a town hall meeting here at, uh, at Pepin, right, Wes? Next Wednesday. Time, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, and then just the last thing, please do me a huge favor. Uh, please go to iTunes and subscribe to the Dr. Jamie Show. Uh, but I am working toward 300 review reviews. If you go to the Dr. Jamie Show, type in Jamie Kulaga under iTunes or in your podcast, scroll down, click five stars, uh, please. That would mean so much to me. I am on a journey. By December, I want 300 reviews. Please, please, please help me. Every like, every follow brings me motivation, inspiration, and amazing people like Akash Patel, candidate for Hillsborough County Commissioner District 1. Come on down. Uh, woo, woo, woo. Give me a hug. Hey, how are you? Oh, good, how are you? Good to see you? Welcome back. My most returned guest. Thank you so much. I love it. I love it. Ah, welcome. Thank you. I'm yeah. going to say a special shout out to the Florida State Seminoles I was last night. <laughs> the gold. Sorry, Wes, I know you're a Michigan guy. Uh, you know, go blue. We'll see Saturday, though. We'll, I'll text you. <laughs> and then my mom is visiting uh, from Melbourne today. Hi, Mom. So Hi, Mom. She's here, so, so thank her for being here. Uh, Not mom. Melbourne where you were. No. Melbourne, Florida. Oh, Florida. That's right. That's oh. right. The cash is worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we have a worldwide guy here today. Um, okay, so, and mom is pretty cool. So, if you guys want, we could just turn the camera on mom. Yeah, she is cool. <laughs> she is. Um, okay, all right, so you kind of know the drill. Before we begin, we have to know something unique, bizarre, or interesting about you that nobody or few people know. And actually, we got mom here, so maybe some Ooh. bedwetting stories, <laughs> pooping in the street. Um, but uh, actually, little Blake did that, didn't he? Didn't he, like, take down his pants and just crap right in the road one time? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so um, 
And, but it has to be something you haven't told us before. Okay. What would it be? Well, I think um, I think people know I like sports. Okay. But I actually love baseball, and I'm a baseball fan. And one of the things I want to do is go to every Major League Baseball stadium. Okay. So I've been to 19 Major League Baseball stadiums. Nice. And watch games, and I'm trying to try to do three three new stadiums a year. So. What's your dream stadium to go to? I've been to Wrigley and Fenway, which are the historic ones, yep. and uh, my favorite one is in Philadelphia in the Philly Stadium, but I have not seen a ball game in, uh, in Minnesota or Pittsburgh, okay. but I've been in the parks, just not for a game. Yep, mm. so interesting. Uh, those are the two new stadiums, I guess, that are interesting. Kansas City is a, is a new stadium, too, I've heard it's beautiful. Nice, so, nice. And how excellent. about the Rays? The Rays, uh, yeah, the Rays have a stadium. I've been in many Rays games. But, uh, <laughs> but maybe a new one built. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hopefully soon. Yeah. 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 You never know. That's yeah. a good question. Excellent. So. Okay. All right. Um, all right, I want viewers to know where and who they're getting their information from. So tell us a little bit about who you are, your profession. Did you go to school? Do you have any pets? Do you like long walks on the beach? You love your mother? Tell us. Well, great question. My uh, my mom has my mom and my dad. They they uh, they're pharmacists by trade, so they okay. they were own pharmacies in New Jersey, in a place called Camden, New Jersey, a very tough town yep. to, to open a business. There were independent pharmacies. My mom ended up selling hers to Walgreens. My dad to another entity. And so I went to high school here in Tampa and uh, went to Florida State for college, go to Ulls, and then graduated and came right back here to Tampa. But I did one semester in London. Okay. I got a degree in English literature and political science, and I did one semester in D.C. I worked for a congressman there. What year were you in London? Uh, 2006. Oh, okay. We yeah. were in 303. Oh, we were there. Okay. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, it was a great experience. I came right back to Tampa. This is home. And I knew I wanted to be here. And I had a lot of great friends who were starting businesses. And so I helped them with their businesses, and then finally I said, you know what? If they can start it, and they have coached me to on, you know, on how to start it, uh, I want to start my own. So I started my own business in 2012, February one, and uh, we've now got seven employees. We started someone new. She starts on Monday, and we work with companies that relocate their headquarters and entrepreneurs that start their own businesses, and we help them promote the Tampa Bay network, which is taking them to events, writing social media content. Um, um, helping them with their outreach initiatives in the, in the charity charity space, you know, you know, a lot of our clients, you know, like Marine Max, we were talking about earlier, they they want to give, but they don't they need a targeted approach. So yes. we can create that strategy for them. Yes. And so doing that is how I got involved in the public uh, sector. Um, I was appointed to different boards by our Gillsborough County Commissioners, once by Commissioner Farlita, who held the seat before. And once by uh, re reappointed by Commissioner Victor Chris to the Citizens Advisory Committee. And then in 2014, Governor Scott appointed me to chair the Early Learning Coalition in Hillsborough County. Nice. So, you know, through that process, I've gotten to know a lot of like officials, a lot of good friends, and uh, realized that some of the things that I've learned in my business, I think would be applicable to the, the local government. Mm -hmm. And so in April of last year, I got the, the, the bug to, to think about running. So literally a year. Yeah, almost, yeah exactly, mm -hmm. almost a year ago. And um, I put my feelers out. Talk to my family, talk to my friends. You know, got the approval from the, from all the people that I uh, that are, I work with to make sure that they're okay with their their marketing person running for office. And I announced June first, and I've been uh, swinging ever, ever since. And so, when can and we'll talk about this at the end, but real quick, when can people vote this year? Is it August? It is August twenty eighth primary. It's a Republican primary for District One. It goes from Apollo Beach, West Chase, uh, all the way to South Tampa. So it's a little. Vast district, um, so like downtown Tampa, Hyde Park, all those areas are town and country where we are. Yeah. Uh, Citrus Park area, that uh, Water Chase area, Odessa, Keystone area, that's all District 1. Ruskin, so every day we're in different parts of the, the community talking to people, talking to citizens, saying, you know, what do you want in your public service? Mm -hmm. So it's a different approach than most, uh, the most first time candidates, but I think it's the right approach because in Hillsborough County we need some change. Uh, and this is an open seat, right? So there's no, there's no person that's been in the seat before and it's running again. I would like a Nordstrom across the street <laughs> and um, a Panera Bread, please. Mm -hmm. um, take so. that down. Right. Take, <laughs> take that notes. Take down. Did yeah, you write yeah. that down? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we talked a little bit about your journey. So, okay, running for something like you're running is a huge feat. Uh, there are many people out there that want to take risks and want to take leaps but fear stops them. I know fear has stopped me before. Um, what would you say are two things you would share with someone who wants to take a leap but feels too fearful to do so? I would say play out the worst case scenario. Okay. You know, what's the worst that can happen if you don't take this risk? 
right? And write down those worst case scenarios. So a lot of times people say, if you well, don't take the risk. You don't yep. take the risk. Because often we think about the worst case scenario for taking the risk. I'll, you know, I won't have health insurance. I won't have enough money. Um, so what happens if you don't take it? Yeah, you can, and people, especially when, the, in the, when you're talking about starting your own business, I mean, you, you two are entrepreneurs. I mean, people say, well, I'll just be miserable doing what I do every day and then I won't enjoy my life. I won't, you know, and so that's the thing we wrote down is like, if I'm going to take this risk, these are things I want to achieve. So write down what you you know you don't want, and uh, and then go do it. And then the other thing is, I would say make a list of ten different friends of yours or friends or family, and ask them their opinion, just to see what you you know what like you know. A good example is when I thought about starting my business, I was struggling with a name, so I thought of ten different names, and I emailed ten different people. I said, "What do you think our name should be?" And then of course you know we go into logo design and yeah. things like that, but you have to ask people's opinion. And so make those same 10 people the same kind of like your advisory board or your, your mentors. A lot, of men, a lot of folks have mentors. I would say make sure you solidify your mentors and ask your mentors before you go jump and, and search your business. I love that. Excellent. And then when you're making this list of 10, the, the coaching spin on that would be make sure you really look at this list of 10 and there are 10 people that you can trust. They're not 10 people and, oh, sometimes they make me feel like I, I should doubt myself. Oh, that person kind of bullies me. Oh, that person has like their own agenda. You don't want people like that on your list because they're going to do what they want to do. You need genuine people like mom, your mentors, your spouse that really have your best interest in mind and send out um, you know, requests to them. I did that with the book cover. Oh yeah? Yeah, so I narrowed it down to three. We had a blue, we had a pink, and we had the gold. And I pulled out to people that I trust and gold won. So There you go. Yep. And Jamie should be on your list. That's, yes. that's also the third thing. Absolutely. Obviously. Obviously. I mean, <laughs> he didn't already know that. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Now I have a trick question for you. Go for it. So along the same lines of the question that I just asked you, many people say they can't take the leap because of money. This stops millions of dreams. Any advice to the person that says, I can't do it, I just don't have the money? You know, I would say save what you can save, if that's the case, so you can okay. you know, have enough money to save in case things don't work out, because you gotta, you, gotta, you gotta pay your bills, you gotta put on the table for you and others, if that's, if that's your responsibility. Um, but also, you know, do two things at once. Okay. A lot of folks you know that are successful mm -hmm. have gone to school and had a part-time job, or, yeah. you, is that what you did? I did it all. I mean, yeah. at one time I had three jobs and I was eight months pregnant. Yep. <laughs> there you go. You go yeah. figure, right? So do two things at once, and this way you can know if you're good at something, and if you know once you're doing, you know, great at the job, then you know you can you can handle it. Yeah, I think that's great. And also, you're you can't a lot of times entrepreneurs can't just fully take that leap. If you can, good for you. Um, but even if you have some money saved. If you're just too scared to take the leap, one of the best things you could do is two things at once. Do this other job. It might be later nights. It might be earlier mornings for a while. Mm -hmm. uh, that's part of the entrepreneurial uh, first few steps for sure. You're really, really busy and overwhelmed, and we're going to talk about days that don't end uh, in a little bit. But that's part of it. So I think that's a great tip, two then, things at once. And then fail. Make sure you fail because I think the, the Super Bowl quarterback this year, Nick Foles for the Eagles, mm -hmm. he said it right after the game. Uh, if you saw his press conference, it was great link. I'll have to see the link. Yeah. Um, you know, he said, failure is how I got here. Because he was the backup quarterback, right? Yeah. And the, their star quarterback got hurt, and now mm -hmm. he's the backup quarterback. And he didn't think he was going to you know, be in the NFL or be in the Super Bowl, let alone win the Super Bowl, yeah. and then be the MVP. Yeah. Right? So I think, you know, when I first started my business, I had three clients my first month, two clients my second month, and one client my third <laughs> month. And so I, I literally failed yeah. twice. And I didn't know if I was going to. To, to survive, but I changed my mindset of how we're going to uh, approach business. And in May of 2012, we ended up with eight clients, and we've had you know over 15 ever since. Nice. There's a great quote by Thomas Edison. I believe it's Thomas Edison, and he says, "I failed my way to success." That's right. So um, now this, what you just said about you only had three clients, two clients, one client, and then you kind of looked at your business model and, and fixed some things up. Did you apply any of that to what you're doing now? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, you know, you have you have to listen to your audience, right? So a lot of people that were my clients said, these are things we don't like with your business, these are things we wish you were working on. So then I just kind of changed it within the realm of what I you yep. know, can handle. So when the campaign started, you know, a lot of folks had a lot of ideas on how to, uh, you know, how to get money, because you have to raise a lot of money in this, in this campaign world, especially in the world we live in today. I mean, um, you're looking at a, a Florida governor's race that's going to cost $100 million per party or candidate, right? So... 
and um, you're looking at a, a you know, I'm taking donations right now. <laughs> 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 Send in whatever you want. <laughs> and so, so a lot of the strategy on how to get you know get funds was was thrown out there. But I focus, you know, let me go tell my platform to people I know. So I made a list of 200 people that I know well. And I also made a list of, uh, you know, 50 people I didn't know well. Mm -hmm. 50 people I wanted to know because... Oh, that's a great one. And I called them not for money, right? Because that's the thing. is people call you for money, you know, that, you know that, that, that turns some people off. Yeah. So I called them and said, no, I just want to sit down with you and pick your brain and earn your support. So change the mindset mm -hmm. on what oh, you I love want. that. You know, that was earn their support. And then, of course, support turns into hopefully funding and hopefully votes. Yeah. Excellent. I love that. Yeah. That's a great way to phrase it. I want to earn your support. I love that. I'm going to have to put that, write that one down for me. Um, okay, so now I want to talk about competition. That's right. Um, okay, uh, along this path, I'm sure you felt competition at times, right? Of course. Um, how did you handle competition, and are there any tips for other people out there that are up against their own competition? Competition is a good thing. I actually tell people that are thinking about working with us in the elevating for at our elevating for our marketing company. Uh, I said, you know, I have competitors out there. I'll name my competitors. I don't mind. I said, you know, everyone has competition. It's a good thing. It helps drive you know the, the world we live in. I said, go hire my competitor, and when it doesn't work out, call me. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I say that, they get they should get shocked. They say, you want me to spend my money with someone else? I said, absolutely, mm -hmm. because I know it's not going to work. Mm -hmm. And the confidence in, you know, believing that. They, 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 they come back six, seven months later and say, oh, you know, you were right. Mm -hmm. And you know what, if, even if they don't, it's a good thing. It's a good thing that, you know, we are, are happy with our business and our clientele. And we're okay if they go somewhere else and we know we're going to continue to do well. We know what tomorrow someone else will watch. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's that confidence behind it. That's the key word right there. I think you need confidence in yourself. You need confidence in your company, confidence in what you're selling, confidence in what you're giving. Oftentimes, we do lack confidence. We have a lot of self-doubt, and sometimes that portrays out. People can feel that vibe when you're doubting something that you have or you're doubting yourself. You also, if you have a lot of doubt, you're not going to speak up as much. If you have a lot of doubt, you're not going to take as many risks. Um, but I think you've shown... You are confident in a great way. You're you're taking those risks. You're overcoming those fears, and that says a lot about you. Yeah, and the worst case scenario, if you if you know if you don't ask the question, who's going to ask it? Right. You don't know what you don't know, right? right. So you've got to try. Yeah. The worst case scenario is you'll fail. You'll go back to doing what you were doing before. Mm -hmm. And that kind of reminds me of speaking up. I'm such a proponent of that. So there's this great book, I know I've said this a million times, by Mika Brzezinski, Knowing Your Value. That book changed my life. She talks about speaking up. I mean, I speak up, I can't even tell you, I just, everything from little coupons at Publix to Marine Max this past weekend, <laughs> um, but also with business partners, with friends, with Jordan Harbinger, who I was like, you know what? I'm going to ask him to be on the show. The worst thing he could say is no. I'm too busy. Yeah. I'm too busy. Can't yeah. do it. So Dave Ramsey, you did tell me no. So if you change your mind and you want to say yes, you can come on the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay. So, all right. I want to transition a little bit and talk about careers now. Sure. When I think of competition, I do think about business. I think about careers. So let's talk about Tampa and jobs. As a candidate for what I call HCCD1, Hillsborough <laughs> County Commissioner District 1, what policy changes or investments do you think are necessary to encourage broader employment to the Bay Area? It's a great question, you know, and, and, I, and I, I have said this at different events that we've had. We have 32 fundraisers around town, um, but one of the biggest things that I've gotten to be involved in, I'm an investor in the Tampa Economic, Hillsborough Economic Development Corporation. Okay. So what that means, we are, we are the agency that the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity leans on to go recruit companies and give them incentives to move here. Oh, and nice. some of those companies are working, are working with us, so it's a great way for, for, for us to be involved. But one of the things that the county commission does, uh, they have a $5 billion budget with a B. Mm -hmm. There are seven county commissioners, and they set aside dollars, they're called QTI dollars, and they're targeted dollars for industries of, of high wage jobs. So for instance, my brother is an engineer. Mm -hmm. He's graduating from Michigan, and he's going to look to work for an engineering job. We don't have the high wage jobs that he wants available for his kind of field, right? For his you know, mechanical engineer, and he's right out of college. So he got recruited to work in Cincinnati for General, AV, uh, uh, General uh, Electric in their aviation division. So my theory on this is we are recruiting jobs, we are recruiting companies, we're recruiting headquarters, but we as a county commission candidate, I think we can, can and a county commissioner hopefully, we can focus on recruiting the right industries here that are going to present those high wage jobs. And those are the industries that are manufacturing, uh, engineering, uh, et cetera. 
because those hosting hosting yes, okay. yes those are the ones that are going to uh, you know bring the new young talent and the young folks that are going to move here are going to move here because our quality of life as you mentioned is great yes. the weather today is cold but look at it in new york today yeah. mm -hmm. but look at it in the midwest yeah. you know so I think that's what we need to focus on, and uh, as you know, tourism is great. 117 uh, million uh, uh, tourists visited Florida last year. Wow. Every 76 tourists equals one new job in our county. Even though we hate the traffic that they bring and the way that you drive, we love you, um, and we appreciate your dollars here. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, all right, anything else in that area that we have to know about? I think in economic development, we've got a lot of wins. I mean, uh, Jable headquarters across yep. the bridge in St. Pete just committed on building the new campus in, in, in St. Petersburg and staying here. Nice. Iron Man just uh, committed to opening their headquarters and expanding to 70 new jobs. So we've had a lot of companies in the last few years that are staying here and WellCare, if you know about WellCare, yeah. they just committed to making this their worldwide headquarters. I mean, they've been awesome. here, yeah. but they're expanding it. And that's what you want. So. There are companies that are definitely getting recruited to leave the state, but people want to stay here because it's the best place to live, work, and play. Nice, I love it. Are there any any like major headquarters you would love to see here that like we actually have a chance at? Well, I mean, I would like General Electric so my brother could. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, but I'll tell you, Amazon was a big uh, big loss for us. We did bid on Amazon headquarters too, which if you read about mm -hmm. fifty thousand employees that they were going to bring to our market. Um, we didn't make the little short list. We were there were three Florida cities: Jacksonville, uh, Tampa, and Miami. Yeah. Our Tampa CP kind of combined their bid, but Miami did make the short list, and it's down to twenty. Uh, but you know, if we got Amazon or maybe a, you know Google down the line, I would be really, really happy. But yeah. that's what we have to work towards. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love it. Okay. Um, so. Tell us a little bit about the growth and change you would bring to the Bay Area if you were elected. And sort of be general here, because we are going to get into some specifics, but what is the, the growth and the change you're going to try for here? Well, I think we, you said earlier about traffic. You know, in, in the year 2024, Hillsborough County will have 600,000 new residents. Wow. So traffic is bad today. Mm -hmm. It was bad a little bit getting over here. But think about it when we have that many more people living in our community. So we have work from home. So there's a great column in today's Tampa Bay Times uh, about BRT bus rapid transit, and basically it says we have to have a little bit of everything mm -hmm. to kind of to get to get uh, feasible uh, affordable solutions involved in transportation. Uh, a little bit of changing our bus routes and where and we've been dedicated bus lanes, mm -hmm. which work. Uh, you know different ways on the on our, our light rail system. If we have a we have a trolley system in downtown, we got to fix that. So those are some general things I think we just need to look at, and we need to be creative with our financing on how we fund this. You know, the legislature funds these programs, and we need to get our, our lo local delegation together and on, you know, back on one one agenda item so we get the funding we need. Six hundred thousand new people, and that's in Tampa. Hillsborough County. Hillsborough. Hillsborough. We already have one point three million in Hillsborough County. That so. is crazy. You know what that actually reminded me of, just to go off on a tangent for a second. So uh, Wes and I someday want to retire in the Keys. And okay. we were talking to this lady just about land in the Keys the other day, and she told us there's a moratorium on building in 2023, right? Yep. You can't, we can't, can't ever build again. Done. Really? Done. Done. For the Keys. For the Keys. Was this before the hurricane? No, after. This was last week. Um, well, we oh, talked wow. to her last week about yeah. it. Wow. So I don't know when they put it into effect. Can you imagine? That's yeah. crazy. So any of you, actually don't take any land because we need to look yeah. first. And then after that, you can have it. <laughs> so just hold off. Yeah. Um, so, okay. Tampa Bay has seen the Super Bowl, the Riverwalk developing tourism growth, and a lot of economic development. How will you bring more to the Bay Area by ensuring that young minds stay in town to build more business in town? Yeah, and you know those sporting events like the National uh, Hockey League All Star Game was here in January, and the and the College Football Championship game that was here last January. They they increased our revenue for our hotels in in the community so much that we we were able to add a six cent tax to our county commission. So you know the bed tax. So if you say you're a visitor and you stay at a hotel and you pay that extra dollar fifty bed tax because mm -hmm. you're a visitor, that that we got we hit the thirty million dollar a thirty million visitor. So last year, so just in Ellsworth County. So it was great tourism for us, and now in 2021 we'll have our Super Bowl here. So to answer your question, I mean, that's what we, we need, you know, we need to continue to attract those sporting events, that are, whether they're high school sports or collegiate sports, like we're going to have the, men, uh, the women's Final Four here again. Oh, wow. Or, or pro sports like the Hockey League and Super uh, or the Hockey also game in the Super Bowl. But, you know, we have to continue to tell our story and promote our young entrepreneurs that are doing well. So the Hillsborough County, uh, Hillsborough County Visit Tampa Bay, our Tourism Bureau, 
um, and our economic development corporation are partnered on a, on a website called makeitampabay.com. And what they're doing is they're highlighting entrepreneurs that are growing their businesses here and staying here. So I think we need to do more of that. I think as a county commissioner, we need to continue to tell the story, but the young folks need to go out there and tell a story to other cities like Austin or Dallas mm -hmm. or Charlotte, where the young people there say, this is our best young professional network, when you got to come here? Mm -hmm. And there's a great young professional organization that our Greater Tampa Chamber has called the Emerging Leaders of Tampa Bay. Okay. Um, last year I was fortunate enough to be the recipient of their 2017 Emerging Leader Award. And what, what that organization does is it makes sure that the young folks that are moving here not only get involved in their community, but find a way to give back. So they match you up with a mentor, they match you up with a not-for-profit organization, and that makes you want to stay here because you're invested in this community. Yes, that is the most important thing, is getting people invested. Once you feel like you're part of a community, it's hard to leave. Like, it would be really hard for me to leave Tampa because I, not only do I just love it, but I do, I feel like I'm immersed in the community. You feel like you're leaving your family. Plus, we won't let you. Oh, good. We'll right. We'll, 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 no, this is the world <laughs> headquarters of the Dr. Jamie show. Um, so... <laughs> Um, I was going to say something, and I just thought, I'm thinking about the world headquarters of Dr. Jamie, so I forgot what I was going to say. Um, and you're involved in the community, you're right? You're on the Board of Fellows yep. at the University of Tampa and some organizations like that. You've seen that some of the students at University of Tampa, they, they, they come from all over the world. You yes. know, 8,500 students from 120 countries, yep. and a lot of them stay here. Yes, they do. And they want to stay here. They just don't just because they, they're here. They want to stay here. They want to be a part of the community. And I remember what I was going to say. I was going to say, right now is such a great time for young people to speak up. That's right. We are in a time where we, your voice is starting to really matter. Um, and that has not always been the case. Usually it's the older people that have the say-so. Uh, but right now we're looking to you and we're thinking about you and we want to hear what you say. So now's their time. Now's their time for sure. Um, okay, transportation. Oh, mom's leaving. We can say bye to mom. Bye. That's okay. We love mom. Mom has to go. You're welcome. Um, okay, so transportation. That's okay, right. uh, in my book, uh, I made a little note here. Tampa wins for every award on the planet. Best place to live, work, play, and even breathe. This comes from the Dr. Jamie Survey of Globalness. That's right, the Survey of Globalness. Um, but despite our awesomeness, our traffic makes people really mad, and we're growing. <coughs> Um, so we talked a little bit about transportation, but what are you going to do to ensure we have better infrastructure on the roads and highways? Sort of go into your what your plans are again. Well, I think you know I think we have to look at every solution that's feasible. Okay. And one of the ones that worked well in California and other states is carpool lanes or high octane vehicle mm -hmm. lanes. Uh, they have dedicated oh, bus lanes. Yeah. Those are things that are pretty affordable for our county commission to achieve, and and and, and they've, they've worked well in other areas, and those are instantly successful. You know, meaning, you know, I've been behind a hard bus many times and frustrated, and so are you, I'm sure. And so, you <laughs> so know true. that if there's a lane where there's going to be buses, you just go down the lane. So, I would say we need to look at studies, and we've had studies that, that look at that option. Do, what do we have going on right now on like the veterans where there's like those orange cones the whole way down? Is that a that's a great that's lane. express lane? And, okay. we, and, and I will promise you that if you take that, you'll feel a lot better because that veterans is gridlock in the morning. <laughs> And it's a, it's a really great stretch. You've got to pay for it, right? So tolls, mm -hmm. tolls you have to pay for it. Yep. And, and, and I've talked to a lot of folks that commute from veterans area to downtown because, again, that's a big, to live out there in that community, the West Chase area, that commute to downtown, it's very common, right? Yeah. But this alleviates their traffic uh, pattern for work. And, I mean, I'm talking to people who say they're only 45 minutes west. They now come here 10 minutes to downtown. Wow. Nice. Certain times of the day. And so I'm, 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 I'm excited for that area, but we have to look at other parts of the county. So last night I was in South County in Apollo Beach, and they've got a road there, Big Bend Road, if you're not driven on that, which is traffic and Ooh. traffic and yep. traffic. So we've got to look at all parts of the county and look at the stretch of what it takes and the, 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 you know, some of the gridlock. And so I think you know, dedicated bus lanes, high like the lanes, a little bit of a, some, some uh, other kind of transit solutions will work. Okay. All right. Flying cars. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, what do you see as the most pressing needs for infrastructure or capital projects in the county? I think without a doubt we need to figure out how to, how to fix our transportation solutions. Okay. I think the second thing is we need to invest in our education. Okay. So what that means is, you know, K-12 through is mandated by our school district. You know, we're the 8th largest school district in Hillsborough County. It's mandated by our school board, sorry. And we have programs within the Hillsborough County Commission, like the Early Learning Coalition of Hillsborough County is a board that I chair, or the Children's Board, which funds a lot of different uh, uh, not-for-profit organizations that, that 
that do great things for children. Um, and after school programs like Head Start and, and Boys and Girls Club, those programs, we have to invest in those programs. As a, you know, as a business person, I meet parents all the time. And I've never met a parent who says they don't want, to, they don't want their child to go to good education. You know, they deserve a good education. Mm -hmm. So what that means is if they're just born, they're newborns, and they're not, they're not in school yet, which is, you know, that's the K-12 through system, which we want them to graduate, we want them to do well. Early learning programs, after school programs are going to change their lives. They're going to help the families, they're going to help the kids, and they're going to allow them to learn how to read early. Mm -hmm. they're, going to learn, they're going to allow them to learn how to be uh, behave properly. So is this like the VPKs and stuff? Exactly. So our yeah. son went to VPK, both of them, and it did make such a huge difference because they're learning a foundation. So when they go into kindergarten, they're right at what they should start to be learning right. as opposed to like not even knowing ABC or one, two, three. So I can vouch for that. If your community has a VPK, it's definitely worth it. And that's what I'm saying. So we have a VPK system here, but we are, have not enough slots for kids. Mm -hmm. So how oh, do we, I as a see. county commission, uh, if elected, how do we help, you know, achieve that goal? Okay. How do we get the business community involved to understand that early learning success is, you know, uh, parallel to the, the future, mm -hmm. right? In 2030, the professions that we know now are not going to exist. Mm -hmm. I believe that. So these three and four year olds now, they need to learn how to read. They need to learn how to get involved. Uh, uh, with their parents and with the routines they have, whether it's nap time or recess or lunch time, whatever it is, because that sets the standard for good behavior and then good grades and then you know, success. Okay, so um, I'm gonna ask you a question off the cuff here. If you don't have an answer to it, then just, I don't have an answer to it. Yesterday I got an email from Hillsborough County Schools saying that um, the budget for my son's school, essentially for probably all of Florida, but definitely Hillsborough County, the raise that the the board got was 47 cents per child. That's right. They were expecting a lot more, at least that's... So if that if that's coming down from, let's say, the governor, and correct me if I'm wrong, okay, mm -hmm. so he, whether he's right or wrong, that's what we're getting, is there anything Hillsborough can do to change that? I mean, he says it's 47 cents a child. That's all you're getting. Can anything be done? Well, our legislators do have the authority. So, so here's what Superintendent Eakins, and I read that email, I got that email as well, and every Hillsborough County parent got this email, mm -hmm. and I got it forwarded to me as a candidate for many parents. And I commend the superintendent for doing that, for reaching out, but I think it was a little too late. I think what we need to do, or what, what can be done if you're a parent, is you know you have local elected officials, uh, meeting with the state house and state senate seat, who have you know submitted their budget request, and they passed their resolutions and they passed their bills this past session. It just ended March 9th or March 11th. The governor then signed the bill and, the, and proposed and made his cuts, and the cuts he made were 47 cents to per child. You know, you can call the governor's office and voice your opinion, but I think the best thing to do would be call your local legislator. Call them and let them know that as a concerned parent, you want change. Mm -hmm. And next session, hopefully things will change, or maybe the governor will, you know, maybe enough people will call and they can change their mind. I don't think that's going to happen. I think this is the final say. Um, but, but you know, that's for the future of Hillsborough County, for your children, I mean, I'm scared. Mm -hmm. That's something we need to fix. And it, it goes back to your school board, too. Your school board then governs our, su our, our superintendent and governs our, you know, our outreach. And so we have a lot of new school board members that are up for election and re-election. There's some great ones, and there's some, some new ones that are running. Some people are retiring. So... I would say this is why local elections matter most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I understand the frustration of you as a parent, but I mean, at this point in time, when the governor signs it, it's a little Done. too late to the game. You, okay. We have to start by electing local people that know what business experience means, that have created jobs, that have been, you know, been involved in the parental, you know, community that can say, I can advocate because I've been here and before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so important. Honestly, you know, I was probably a lot naive to that, didn't pay too much attention to it. Um, if this was a decade ago and they said 47 cents a child, I, I wouldn't have cared. I hate to say that, but I'm just being honest and real with you because I would say, okay, maybe I just need to work a little harder to get my kid his own computer since the school can't do it. Uh, maybe I need to work harder to afford a tutor since they're not going to get, you know, such great before school or after school care or, or a great teacher. But now, with protection in the school, I can't change that. I can't make um, $3 million a year and yet like protect my child's school. I can buy them a great computer to do better educationally, but I can't put an officer in that school. 
And that's what's scaring me is that as a parent, we don't have, there's nothing I can do. If they don't approve to have 20 guards standing at my son's elementary school, there's nothing I can do about it. It's crazy. It is. It is. And the curriculum too, as you know, you know, there are a lot of folks that uh, want, you know, mental health mm -hmm. is a big issue. And it's right? why, why some of these issues that we've seen with, even as recently as this week in Austin have happened. And so, you know, the opioid crisis you read about, those are some key issues. And I hope that this commission that the governor just tasked to, re to revisit the opioid issue and the Parkland and the violence issue, uh, will look into those. Uh, and the sheriff of Pinellas County, I know, was appointed that, among others. So, you know, I would say, again, your, your local elected officials, your local school board members, your local sheriff, who's our great sheriff is amazing. He's already looked into how we can arm our 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 school district, I think it's 91 deputies more he needs to, to nice. arm. Good. And, um, that's a lot. But, I, but, yeah, that's but good. you know, the resources are, are, are scarce, and mm -hmm. so we've got to work harder to make sure that our, our law enforcement and our, our mental health community and our school district has the right resources. And I would say, too, like to you as, as someone who um, is, is going to vote for you, um, I would ask you to educate us as parents more about how important it is to get involved in voting for the right legislators or whoever we need to because it didn't, I don't want to say it didn't matter to us, but it's so important now because Absolutely. we need the funding for protection over our kids. And we don't know, a lot of us don't know where to vote, when to vote. Who we're voting for? Who's running? Who's focused on education? We don't have that awareness. So bringing that to us and educating us, hey, in six months down the road, you're going to want to look into these two candidates because they're ultimately going to influence what the governor signs, whether it's 47 cents or $20 a kid. So well, I'm happy to do that. And I'll even take it one step further. If you, if you tweet me at Patel Times and ask me to, to connect you to a legislator, I will connect you to a legislator on email. Nice. And again, it, 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 they're, all, they're all public email addresses yep. for them. And they all have a public office and a district aide and, and an office manager. And so my point in this is, you know, I, I believe in public service. This is something I want to do to give back. So my strategy in this campaign was to raise money early and go talk to voters and, and earn, earn support from each and every one of you. Right? So if you live in Apollo Beach, West Jason, South Tampa, you can sign a petition here that allows me to get on the ballot. That doesn't mean you're going to vote for me. It doesn't mean you're going to write a check. It means it's the opportunity for me to, to run for office to get my name on the ballot. And I need 3,000 of those signatures. So if you live in these areas and you don't mind signing one, uh, please let me know. I'll come to you and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll deliver some to you and I'll pick them up or I'll give you my address. You can mail them back to me. But I've been knocking on doors every Saturday. We knocked on West Chase last Saturday. We were, we were going to be in Gibson this Saturday at 10 a.m. We were in uh, Apollo Beach last night. We're all over Hillsborough County, but, we, but we're doing this. I'm literally knocking on doors and people are saying, I'm fed up with Republicans. I'm fed up with President Trump. I'm fed up with, with the local government here. Why should we support you? And I'm saying, what other what other county commission candidate or what other local elected official has reached out to you like this? And a lot of them say a few names. Exactly. A lot of them say not many. And I said, well, this is it. This is my cell phone number. When I get elected, if I get elected, call me. Mm -hmm. If I don't answer, then shame on me and vote me out of office. Mm -hmm. But that's where you have to hold your local elected officials and all your elected officials accountable. Mm -hmm. Congress, too. Congress and, and Senate, I mean, you know what's going on in these states. It's always a, a tough fight with the budget there. So... I would say, Jamie, I, you know, I appreciate your support. I'm glad I earned your support. And I'm happy to connect you and tell you all the other elected officials that I support and believe in and know that they're going to do good for our community. I'd love to also be connected to Oprah. Okay. Thank yeah, you. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll okay. tweet her. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, as he was talking toward the end there, I was thinking about how he's earning people's support. We talked yes. about this before. The sh we talk, did we talk about during the show or before the show? Both. I don't know, both. Okay, but if you're just tuning in, uh, I love that he works to earn people's support. And I think no matter what you're in, if you're if you want to be a, a manager, a leader, you want to move up in your wherever you work or whatever you do in life, don't just beg people. You do this for me. You need to earn people's support. Uh, and once you earn it, they're going to want to follow you. They're going to want to believe into you. They're going to want to vote for you. Right. Um, but you do have to put in the legwork and earn people's support. Uh, and that comes from learning about what other people want and trying to give to them. Uh, you're serving them as a leader. Um, okay. So, oh, and then just something I wanted to ask uh, you on transportation, and I know we're cutting it close here, um, but 
the port of Tampa, does that play any role into uh, any anything that you're thinking along that we need for Tampa? Port of Tampa is a great asset to our community. If you don't know, Florida has 15 ports. Tampa has the largest port. And the amount of resources, the amount of cruises, the amount of tourism, the amount of impact on, on, on just um, all of our you know, our produce that comes in and out of the port. If you read recently, the bananas are not coming through the port. It's it's an amazing asset. We're doing the renovation there, or the governor has put a lot of money to in, in, invest in the infrastructure of the port. It's to the tune of almost a billion dollars of infrastructure between the Tampa airport and the port. Um, it's a great it's a great asset to our region, and we and that's the area that I'm running. All that, all that, that whole downtown or, or port core is where I'm running for office. And so, yeah, to answer your question, it's a uh, if you've not visited. Definitely visit. If you've not gone there to see how many cruise ships, we have, I think, four cruise ships now that go from Tampa to Cuba. Wow. So uh, it's Carnival Cruise Line. I've been on the ship when we did the launch. It was an amazing experience. And what I, I'll tell you, it's just, the, it's great to see Tampa on the tourism map for cruises. You know, people say Fort Lauderdale's got a great port. Yeah. Miami's got a great port. But, but now, how about Florida? And so that's, you know, I challenge you to go find a cruise out of Tampa and go visit our port. Nice. Excellent. That's have cool. we ever, like, toured the port or anything? No. No, we, we should, should do we that. We should set that up. Yep. yep. I love it. I would do that. Oprah, the port. I mean, <laughs> I got a good future out of me. Okay. So when people think of candidacy, they think of taxes. Do you plan to promote any changes to existing taxes? And if so, why? Uh, right now, I don't. You know, I, I don't think we should raise taxes. I, you know, people want to raise taxes for a couple of different issues. One is the transportation we talked about. The other one is baseball. And then I'll just, you know, in a baseball stadium is a great, you know, great win for us. It, it attracts people, it attracts businesses, it attracts tourism, it re, re uh, rejuvenates the Ebor City downtown area. And I think it's a great idea. But we have to, you know, there, there's creative financing opportunities. And to answer your question on taxes, that would be the only way I would see it, but it's got to be a, a team effort. We've got to have the raise involved to over a third mm -hmm. of what I think the business community will, would support it. There's a two business leaders that I admire, named Ron Cristaldi and Chuck Sykes, that have started an organization called Tampa Bay Race 2020, and they have selected 100 business people to be involved in the Raise 100. I'm one of those 100 people. Nice. But, but what it's saying is that I've got to pledge, and I want to pledge, Cheese tickets and sweets, and I will do that. And the thing about it, and I need to find other people to do it, mm -hmm. but that money is only going to be so much. Yeah. So we've got the, the raise ownership, we've got the business community, and we've got to see what the county can put in and the city can put in. Um, and those are the that's the taxes issue. You know, do we raise taxes? Do we find creative ways to, 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 to use CRA money or bed tax money, hotel money? I was just going to say that, yeah. yeah. That's where I don't know. That's where, as a commissioner, those are the, the questions I'm getting, you know, the transportation and the race. Those are the big two issues. Okay, excellent. Um, okay, uh, let's see. I okay. say as a commission candidate. Yes, <laughs> he's already in the role. Um, okay, transportation, taxes, economics, building, safety, the people, your regular life. Does your day ever end, ever Ever. You know, it's funny because today's Friday, and normally, you know, let's say you probably just, just my girlfriend and I would just watch TV or go to a restaurant and relax, but we are um, we are going to see three movies for the Gasparilla Film Festival tonight. I'm on the advisory board. It's a great deal. You know, we have such such a great arts community here in Aylesburg County. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, if you know the month of March, which by the way, my birthday was Tuesday, so March is my favorite Happy birthday. birthday. Thank you. The first day of spring, and on in early, the first weekend of March, we had the Gasparilla Arts Festival. The second weekend of March, we have the Gasparilla Music Festival. The third weekend of March, we have now, it's the Gasparilla Film Festival. So, you know, it does end when you want it to end, but I never want it to end because I enjoy what I do. When you love what you do, it's not it's not work, it's fun. And so Tampa and Ellsworth County has a great community here. I'm proud to be part of it. So to answer your question, it doesn't really end because I'm always doing something fun within our community, but I also enjoy leaving town and traveling. So we get to travel, we travel a little bit during the Christmas holidays. We're going to travel uh, a couple weeks to D.C. just to visit some friends. Mm -hmm. And um, and I also want to recruit new friends to come visit here because we have spring training. Mm -hmm. We have great concerts. We have hockey. Our hockey team is in the playoffs. Yeah. I'm going lightning. Yeah, um, the Bucks are making some trades, and they're doing well. So so I think uh, I think the day never ends because you're always on your phone. Um, but sometimes you got to shut your phone off and enjoy the community around us. And like one of my favorite things to do is, Last Sunday we went to Armature Works. I've been to Armature Works no. and just sit at the sit at the, the communal table there and watch people. You know, there's so many great people in town, yeah. and all different walks of ages in life go through Armature Works right now because it's very new. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of different restaurants. There's 12 different restaurants here, and Ooh. a couple of different bars. 
So definitely check it out if you haven't checked it out. Excellent. So, okay, so I want to ask you, so the day doesn't end. There's a lot of people out there that their day doesn't end either, and maybe they're not as passionate about what they're doing. So they wish that their day would end, and it's not ending, and they're not happy. Um, do you have any tips for them on how to kind of achieve that work-life balance. So I, I share all my tips, obviously, that's what I do, but from a guy's perspective and, and being so busy, there's a real value in like clarity breaks and stepping away. Any tips for those people that just feel like their day never ends? I would say goals and deadlines. You know, set, set a weekly goal of yourself of, of, let's say, you know, some people like to walk. So I want to get 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 steps a day. Set that goal. So if you're sitting at a desk all day and you're working, well, you're not hitting your goal of steps. So just take a break and go hit your goal, whatever it is. Whatever your own goal is, no one's going to judge you but yourself, right? Yeah. And then deadlines. Say, hey, I'm going to spend 40 hours a week and I'm going to spend 10 hours with my girlfriend or my fiance or my wife. Mm -hmm. And set that deadline where I'm going to spend that 10 hours and I'm going to enjoy, you know, make sure you're going to enjoy the time. But yeah. Make sure you set a deadline up. And it doesn't have to be weekly, it doesn't have to be daily, it could be monthly. Mm -hmm. In a given month, I'm going to set a deadline up. I'm going to spend at least X amount of hours not working. Mm -hmm. And if you write it down, mm -hmm. you're more likely to do it. Yeah, Much more. So get a, a dry erase board, get a chalkboard if you have that, or get a, a marker and a pen and just put it down and show it to whoever you're talking to. I love that. Yeah, I totally believe in visualizations and writing things down. Uh, research shows you're more likely to reach your goal by 90% just by reading it, writing it down. So that's absolutely uh, huge. And I am a big proponent of taking clarity breaks. I just did a YouTube audio on one of the things that I do to be happier and it's give to myself. And that might seem selfish, um, but I know that when I go sit on the dock for 10 minutes and look at the water, or when I go out for a run and come back, I'm a better mom, I'm a better wife, I'm a better citizen, I have probably less road rage, um, I, healthier. I'm healthier. That's the most, you know, yeah, you live longer. I, yes, you live oh. longer and yeah, and you just, you feel better um, about being able to give to other people. You don't feel like everyone's just taking from you. You have the energy to give it. You right. can do it uh, when you take some time for yourself. So, um, all right, where are we at? Uh, okay, is there someone, uh, if there's someone out there that wants to follow in your footsteps, what is your advice to them? I would say put everything on paper, mm -hmm. write everything down that you want to do, and send it to some people that you have, have known for a long time and you trust, and then have a conversation with them individually, and say, you know, what do you think I should do? What are your, what are your, your, what are your restrictions? What are your, your fears? But write it down and present it to people. And the more you present it, the better you'll tune it. You'll fine tune it, right? And then go do it. Mm -hmm. Set a goal and deadline to go do it. If there's someone young out there, early 20s, uh, and they're like, I'd love to do something in politics like what you're doing, you know, in the political side of the realm, but I don't have any experience in it. Mm -hmm. Are they just screwed or should mm -hmm. they take the leap and try? What's your best advice? Take the leap. You know, the, the best candidates are the first time candidates that come out there, and you know, every candidate's been a first time candidate sometime, right? Yeah. And so, my advice, and, I, and I've been in this process now for nine months, and I've met so many first time candidates that are. are Wow, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm getting criticized by my friends. I'm not raising money. People are sitting on the door in my face. That happens to everyone. Mm -hmm. But again, back to fear. You've got to you've got to face fear. And so, I don't want regrets. And so, if I didn't do this now at 30, 34 years old, I don't think I would have uh, would have done it. Mm -hmm. So this is the time. This is the opportunity, and, and it presented itself. And I I I've always said. You know, you can go back to doing what you want to do if this doesn't work out. Yes. Mm -hmm. But this is the opportunity. So if you're in, if you're in business and thinking about getting into politics, this is the time. If the seat's open, go do it. Go do it. I love it. Give it. Yeah, you can always go back. Like especially people like separate of this that want to move. Like there's some people that are like, I want to go move out west. Oh, I just don't know. I just don't know if I should do it. Go do it. You can always come back. Oh, I want to move to. It could be anywhere in the state of Florida. It could be in the country. It could be out of the country. You don't like it. Just come back. Right. That's it. That's fine. Just go 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 live life and go give it a try. Um, all right, a couple loose items here, just sidebar questions that I had for you before we end. Um, leaders Friday lunch, what is this? And in demand speaker. Two separate things, but what what are they? So Leaders Friday Lunch is a group uh, that myself, a buddy of mine who's in healthcare, another friend of mine who's in real estate, and another friend of mine who's in accounting. We started this two thousand nine November. 
And what, what it was is we were all meeting people at different networking events, and we all were connecting each other to different referrals and different partners to do business with. But I said, let's make a focus on it. So the first Friday of each month, myself and the other three gentlemen I mentioned would each invite one other person that the rest of the group didn't know. And we would invite them, and we would just network and talk about different things that were going on in the community. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we would have 12 different lunches, 12 different months, and we had 48 guests. And so then we decided, let's throw a reception. So we threw a reception to invite all of our guests, and then we'd have them invite a future guest. Mm -hmm. So we continue to grow our brand, grow our network, people do business with each other, people do you know, a, lot of, a lot of relationships have grown from it. Um, but then we would always post a photo on social media, we had a Twitter account, we posted on our website, we listed who our guests were. And what it came down to was, you know, we were the future leaders of the Tampa area. So we called our future leaders Friday luncheon. And the mayor, the mayor of Tampa, he decided he'd mayor of Buckhorn. He's like, I want, I'd like to come. The, the commander of the Air Force Base, McDill Air Force Base, joined us. The owner of the Buccaneers uh, joined us. Uh, you know, some, some really real well-known people in this community have come to it because what we created was a way for us young entrepreneurs to give back and find ways to learn from our, our mentors. Right. And by putting them together at one table, everyone enjoyed their company and their conversation. And so I recommend it to any young professional out there. Go to leadersfl.com and learn our model. It's it's up there for a reason. We want to bra brag about what we do. We don't want to hide it. So um, so that that is the answer to that question. Okay. And uh, that group is kind of taking a little bit of hiatus because times are changing. Life yep. of mine and and some of the other hosts have had kids, so it's been a little tough. But um, but you know we'll bring it back and we'll do another social. We'll make sure we, you get to get invited. Nice. I love it. I love it. And then in demand speaker. What is that? So you know the networking and how to leverage relationships speech that I've given to University of Tampa and St. Leo and USF. That has been a topic that um, Career Source and Transitioning Executive Networks, some of those organizations, have really wanted to talk about because a lot of people network mm -hmm. and a lot of people network for business purposes. I know Wes mm -hmm. and I have talked about this many times. But how do you make it effective, and then how do you turn it into your business? And so, so that's this, this you know, synopsis of how I started my business, that's become like an in-demand topic that I've been asked to speak. I just spoke at a, an engineering association. You know, I'm speaking, I spoke at an accounting association not too long ago. So, I, you know, that has been the, the gist of my speeches. It's been a great experience for me to talk to business leaders. Excellent. And if someone wants to get a hold of you to speak for them or their organization, where should they go? They can uh, go to uh, my my Twitter, at Patel, P-A-T-E-L-T-I-M-E-S, Patel Times. You can tweet me there. Or you can go to our, our email address, info, I-N-F-O, at elevate, E-L-E-V-A-T-E, hyphen, I-N-C, dot com. And then, of course, you can go to my Patel2018.com website, which is how I... Uh, how and where I list all my events, which I have a lot of events coming up in April, and how I uh, where how and where I list all of my, you know, topics that I believe in, like public safety or tourism or economic development, education, and my beliefs on each one of those. So Patel2018.com is the best website to learn about my stances and my events. Okay. And then uh, Elevate, E-L-E-V-A-T-E dash I-N-C dot com is our company website. Okay, excellent. And I was just going to ask you, where can we find out everything we need to know about you? That is where, what is your, do you, ha do you know offhand where your next event is at? It is, April 5th at Duckies on Kennedy. It's a meet and greet. There's no contribution required. It doesn't matter your party affiliation. We want you to meet uh, me, learn about my issues, learn, learn something from my friends that are hosting this. Also, sign a petition if you live in our district. It doesn't matter your party affiliation. So April 5th at Duckies from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. We will be there, and we look forward to seeing you. Okay, excellent. All right, so uh, last question for you here. If you could leave the viewers with one piece of advice, one sentence only, what would it be? I would say don't give up. I think a lot of people uh, uh, are afraid of giving up and, and just be bold, be brave, be you, be, be determined. I love it. Be bold, be brave, be you. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Yes. Go Knowles on Saturday. Yes. Uh oh, Wes got, uh -oh. Uh -oh. Wes is behind the camera. He can't say anything about his team. I'll text you. Uh, I'll text you. <laughs> uh, happy Friday. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Be bold, be brave, be you. Next week on the show, we are talking bold with a group of young individuals that go to colleges, middle schools, high schools, and talk about bullying prevention. See you next week. Bye.
Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching the Dr. Jamie Show episode this week. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Do me a favor and subscribe to me on iTunes and YouTube. And of course, please give me some feedback on the show. Looking forward to reading it.